Are you someone who doesn't like touchscreens? Well, this dual mode touchscreen is just for you. Some people just don't like touchscreens, and that's fair enough too, because there are pros and cons for the standard LCD, as well as the touchscreens available up until this point. Touchscreens can be really great. For instance, if we're trying to do some manual moves, we wanna go sideways on X, up on Y, and then sideways on X again. With the standard LCD, this is particularly clunky. We have to go through several menus, select our axis, make the movement, go back a couple of menus, forward a couple of menus, do the next movement and repeat for the third one as well. It can also be very tedious on an LCD screen to change something like E-steps if you have to change the value a great deal. When we're setting a Z offset, however, or baby stepping, for instance, with the BL touch, the LCD menu is a million times better. Another problem with touch screens is you don't get the feedback from the firmware in the form of error messages. And because of that, it can be very hard to troubleshoot. Previously, I've made a couple of videos on the MKS TFT. And while it was possible to customize it, there were some limitations. Well, this video is about the TFT35 from Big Tree Tech. And the special thing about it is it's dual mode. It can emulate a regular LCD screen and switch over to a touch screen in three seconds. So you get the best of both worlds. I've been testing it with a range of boards with the aim of making a comprehensive guide. So let's start by looking at the specs and price of the product. The TFT35 from Big Tree Tech is a dual working mode touchscreen. That means from the same piece of hardware, you'll gain touchscreen functionality, but you can switch back at any time to the traditional LCD if that's what you prefer. On AliExpress, it retails for under US $30, and there are two models, the standard and the E3 edition, which is a straight swap for the factory LCD found in the Ender 3, the Ender 5, and the CR10. It's not fully compatible with the factory mainboard for those printers, so we'll cover compatibility later on. The screens are called TFT35 because they're 3.5 inches across the diagonal. They each have an encoder wheel and click knob, as well as a reset button. The primary difference between them then is their physical layout. They have the same size screen, but on the E3, the knob is placed to line up with factory printers. The only other difference I can find is that the E3 model has LEDs behind the knob and you can set the color of this from the menu. One nice thing about both of these is they add a full-size SD card slot and a USB thumb drive to print from. Big Tree Tech has once again done a great job providing resources for these products. They have a GitHub page for the E3 and Standard Edition, and in there you'll find a user guide, which is quite detailed and will take you through all of the mounting dimensions, wiring, and everything else you're likely to need. In the hardware folder, you'll also find things like a pin diagram, where all of the pin numbers are labeled if you want to do something custom with firmware. Speaking of firmware, this is fully open source and the touchscreen firmware for both models is available on GitHub as well. I've also made some resources which are linked below in the description. Before you pull the trigger, let's talk about mainboard compatibility. Because this is a dual mode LCD, it needs to be connected in two ways at the same time. And whether a mainboard has provision for this dictates its compatibility. Being a Big Tree Tech product, it's compatible with any of the modern Big Tree Tech boards, and that's because they have a specific TFT connector. This is also compatible with any ramp space boards because they have additional connectors as well. A 4x2 pin header labeled Auxiliary 1 is exactly what we need. Technically, we could replace any factory LCD without changing the main board, but it would mostly be a waste of time and money. For the standard Creality Melzy main board, as well as the drop-in replacement TH3D EasyBoard Lite, this applies. They both have the factory ribbon cable LCD connector to get it working without touchscreen mode, but they don't have the additional serial port. But I do have an asterisk next to the EasyBoard Lite because that is a serial pin header, and with some firmware tweaks, maybe this would be possible to use. Now we'll cover the wiring in depth. And as we saw in the compatibility section, either of these boards comes with a serial connector, shown here in black, and two ribbon cable connectors, shown here in grey. We'll worry about the black serial connector first, which connects the touchscreen functionality, and it's a 4 plus 1 set of wires. And this is how I depict it in my diagrams. The loose reset pin is optional, and we won't even use it for some configurations. 
On the big three tech boards, if we inspect the back of our TFT pin, we'll see that all of our wiring is labelled. And this is what I use to make these diagrams, which are linked in the description. We have the SKR version 1.3, the SKR version 1.4 is in the same position, but flipped. We have the standard SKR Mini, the SKR Mini E3 Dip, the SKR Mini E3, and it's the same for versions 1 and 1.2 and the SKR Pro. Any future Big Tree Tech boards that come out are going to be labelled in the same way. For ramps compatible boards, we don't use the reset pin, but we orient it to the right and plug it into the top row of four connectors for auxiliary one. Now onto the ribbon cables, and our first scenario is a RepRap full graphic smart display that is described as such in Marlin firmware and has two LCD ribbon cables. We plug it in exactly the same way, expansion 1 to expansion 1, expansion 2 to expansion 2, but you might find on rep style boards that you need to trim the connector and rotate 180 degrees before you plug them in. If this is backwards, don't worry, nothing will be broken. Printers such as the Ender 3, Ender 5 and CR10 have the CR10 style full graphic display, which only has one ribbon cable connector. On the main board side, we leave this plugged in wherever it was, and then we plug it into expansion 3 on the TFT. I didn't need to for my testing, but if you get stuck, try cutting the tab and rotating that connector like with the other type of display. For the standard model, you're going to need to design and make a mount. But for the E3D model, it's a straight swap. So all we do is remove the front plate, undo the four screws on the back, put the new one into place and do everything back up. The knob for the encoder wheel simply slides on and off, this whole install can be done in around 10 minutes. When you power back up the machine, a red message saying no printer attached and a thermistor value of 00, zero means you have connection issues. The most likely error is having the wrong connection speed set, so go to the settings and toggle it back and forth to see if it starts to work. When it's working, we'll no longer have the red message and coming to the thermistor, we'll have at least one value present. To change between the two modes, we simply hold down the click knob and then rotate and press or touch the screen to select the one you want. On LCD mode, it's normal to see black until you turn the dial, activating the menu. This will be completely blank if there's a connection issue, otherwise you'll see the usual information. Firmware updates have been quite frequent, so you might want to consider updating yours to get rid of any bugs. To see your current version, go to Info under the Settings menu. This version here is 24.2. Linked in the description is the firmware for the Big Tree Tech touchscreens, and that includes this TFT35 as well as some other smaller screen models. What we want to do is come to clone or download and then download the zip. Once we've unzipped our archive, we'll have the following files inside. We need an SD card to drag some of these files to. We have two choices based on the graphical user interface that we want. The standard ones is this top folder, and then we have our Variation Unified Menu Material theme. I'm going to go for that one for this example. I come inside the folder, and I look for my model, which is a TFT35 underscore version 3. I drag it to the SD card. I now do the same thing for the folder above. With these two items in place, we can safely eject our card and head to the printer. With the power off, we insert the SD card into the TFT, and then power up the printer. Instantly, we'll see it goes into update mode, first updating the actual firmware code, and then updating the font. After a short while, it will switch to updating the graphics, and you'll see all of them cycle through on screen. After two to three minutes, you'll be back at the menu and the update is complete. And you can verify this once again on the info page. Afterwards, to prevent updates every time you turn on the power, you're gonna wanna delete the folders and files that were left behind. So what if we want to customize the graphics on the touchscreen? Fortunately, it's super easy. If we come inside the folder for our particular touchscreen, we'll see there's a folder called bitmap and in there are all of the graphics. To change any of these, all we need to do is save a bitmap overriding them with the same name. I'm going to change the boot up logo. Here I've opened up the old logo in Photoshop, put a black layer to hide it and then my teaching tech logo. And all I need to do is save as to override it. We set the format to bitmap, say that we want to replace it, and the only thing to get right here is to leave it on 24-bit depth. 
Not to say that Photoshop is the only program we can use, we can use anything that can edit bitmaps, including MS Paint. We can even see the default file mat is 24-bit bitmap. A nice thing is that if you're just updating graphics, you don't need to copy over the firmware file, and you can even come inside this folder and delete the font file unless you want to update that as well. We repeat the firmware update process with the SD card in as we power on, except this time only the icons will be updated, and when we power on the printer again, we'll see our custom logo on boot. If we come into the screen menu, it's also worth noting that we can customize the colors of the LCD mode. This is nice because you don't need to play with the firmware and the change is in effect as soon as you switch modes. This firmware is open source, so we can make further changes to suit our printer. If you've got an environment set up to edit 32-bit Marlin, you can open the folder and compile firmware using platform IO. The file we want is configuration.h. Everything is quite well annotated here, and it's in two sections. We have our LCD section up the top where we can set our colors, turn on and off the message at the top, and even make it full screen to fill the entire display. The second section is for the TFT mode. We can turn on and off the boot screen, change font and background colors, and very importantly, here we can tell it if we have more than one hot end or extruder. We can also change all of the preheating values for the hot end, the manual movement speeds, and the manual extrusion and retraction speeds. If you've got a filament runout sensor going through the TFT, you probably want to set the size of your machine and these parameters here as well. Finally, auto bed leveling is available and turned on by default, but if you want, you can uncomment this and play with the manual leveling points below that. Just like when we compile Marlin, we tick compile and a firmware binary file will be created. Assuming we're successful, we can come to the .pio folder inside build and inside a folder for our particular TFT will be the binary file to copy to the SD card and reflash the TFT. Next up is filament runout detection, which we can run from the TFT and not have to change the main firmware of the printer. This will work with a simple micro switch using ground and signal or a sensor like the Easy Out that takes power as well. The TFT also supports encoder style sensors that track movement of the filament. If you need to, you can head to the GitHub and check the wiring. On both models, it's labeled fill detection and has the signal, ground and power pins. Installation is very easy. Simply turn the TFT around and plug in the sensor. This easy out from TH3D was a direct plug-in with no modifications. After verifying that the LED on your sensor is sensing correctly, you need to come to the TFT menu and then into settings, feature, and turn on filament runout. If you've got one of the encoder sensors, then change it to smart instead. If you want to adjust the parameters of when the filament is changed, that's available in the firmware. By default, it's going to do it 10 in from the corner. And if your sensor is detecting the reverse of what you expect, simply change field runout inverting from true to false or vice versa. Just remember that filament runout detection connected to the TFT will only work when you start a print through the touchscreen mode of the TFT. Now that we've been over thoroughly how to set up the various functions of the TFT, let's look at how it works. Most of it is pretty straightforward. We have some nice features such as various filaments built in for preheating, we also have a nice manual filament extrusion menu with different speeds and a nice menu to move around the print head manually too. We can home X, Y, and Z independently. And another nice feature is that we can list in our firmware file any custom buttons we want to appear on this menu. Without any setup work at all, we have a nice ABL menu, including pre-made buttons for all of the features of the BL Touch. We can easily set the Z offset here as well as control baby stepping. The addition that I'm most excited about is a terminal where we can manually enter G-code and best of all, we'll get all of the feedback from the firmware, which in many cases will negate the need to ever connect the printer to a computer when you're calibrating special features. Now it is important to note that I haven't done any long-term testing with this, but so far it seems very promising. It offers the same slick experience as the MKS TFT, but adds a whole host of new features that address a lot of the weaknesses. And if you ever need to switch back to the standard LCD, you can do so in only three seconds. Now a question I would anticipate is does it work at the same time as Octoprint? And the answer is yes, so no problems there. 
If you've got one of these, or maybe you've got suggestions for a nice custom item in the menu to speed up your workflow, please leave them below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.